Welcome to Meet the Artist. This program is brought to you by Hedberg Public Library and JATV Media Services. I'm your host, Teresa Wynn. Meet the Artist features various local artists whose work will be on display in monthly exhibits at Hedberg Public Library. In the studio today, we have the very talented Woody Olson, our featured artist for the month of December. Welcome to the studio, Woody. Oh, thank you. I appreciate the offer and I'm glad to be here. Yeah, so nice that you could come in. So let's talk about your life as an artist. When did that all kind of begin? When you were younger, who encouraged you? Well, my grandmother was an artist. So she studied uh, at the Art Institute of Chicago and the University of Chicago. And we, she passed away before I was born. But um, my mother had a lot of her artwork, so she always had one piece, one oil painting, hanging over my bed. So every morning and every evening, I'd see that painting. And she did ceramics, arts and crafts ceramics, which I have in my home here on my fireplace mantle. So I have quite a bit of uh, uh, works of art, drawings and paintings of hers. So that was my major influence growing up. And I was always interested in art and architecture. And my parents would always drive me past Frank Lloyd Wright homes. And my mother knew a few people on Delavan Lake that had homes that were Frank Lloyd Wright homes. So I got to go them go in there at early ages. So it was always You were surrounded surrounded by, by art and art artists. And, yes. That's so cool. Do you remember how young you were when you first created your first piece that someone said, Wow, Woody, look at that. Well, I started drawing at a really young age. So I suppose I was in second, third grade when I started doing little drawings of homes, which was influenced by Frank Lloyd Wright. And um, I suppose I had other, uh, you know, drawings that I was doing, but I can re remember those and I think they're in my baby book. <laughs> oh, nice. Yes. Nice. You kind of had it all along. Huh? Yes. I'd say. So, at some point you took art classes then? Well, I was fortunate. I went to Bigfoot High School in Walworth. I was raised in Sharon, but I had an excellent art teacher in high school, and she was gave me really excellent training on reading paintings, and um, she'd always call on me to uh, uh, get up in front of the class and, and uh, read uh, 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 paintings of, of, you know, famous artists. So she gave me a, a really good training, and I'm still in contact with her. Aww. And she's still uh, uh, showing and, and uh, winning awards. Nice. So she was one of your early role models. Yes. And influencers as far as in the world of art. and. Were there other artists that you looked up to, whether they, or even now, locally or well, famous sure. artists? Sure, of course. I grew up in the 60s in high school, so I was very influenced by the modernists from the 50s and 60s pop art. And of course, at that time, Life magazine always had uh, covers of Warhol or Jackson Pollock or whoever it may be. Right. Yeah, so they were very influential on my art. Sure. And you studied art? Yes. So I started uh, at Whitewater and took uh, basic studies there. And then I transferred to uh, Layton School of Art in Milwaukee. And unfortunately, it closed. So I transferred to Minneapolis College College of Art and Design. And Minneapolis was wonderful because they had the Walker Art Center and the Institute was part of the school 
and the school was designed by Kenzo Tangi, which was one of his first uh, uh, architectural buildings in the United States. So the school was fabulous and had wonderful spaces and um, was able to use the Art Institute for studies and, and working on papers and so forth. That's great. So of all the mediums, what's your favorite? Well, I do work, most of this is a combination of watercolor and acrylics and a little oil and enamel. <laughs> so I do incorporate a lot of uh, different medias. So mm -hmm. they're quite mixed medias. Mm -hmm. You brought some famous or famous favorite yes. pieces, someday famous, <laughs> uh -huh, <hopefully. laughs> to our studio. And I love them. So let's talk about them a little bit here, starting okay. with this. Well, I brought green. this one. Um, I use a lot of green in my work. Um, and this one uh, is, you, and I use a lot of gold and black, of course. Um, this one actually uh, won an award, a state award, and was in the uh, Wrap ex exhibition at the uh, Pile Center at the University of Wisconsin nice. this past year, and um, of course, I do. I was really, of course, uh, influenced by the modernists, uh, Jackson Pollock, and even when it was critiqued for the, uh, when it won the award. The curator from the University of Wisconsin said it reminded her of Jackson Pollock. So I was, I was like, okay. Oh, big compliment, <laughs> right? Yes, yes. So this is golden emerald. Yes, yes, Love yes. Love that. Matches my dress. Yes, yes. <laughs> and over here, tell me about the technique you used for this. Well, and what's your process? Well, it's a brand new piece. I've never really sh have brought it out or showed it or exhib exhibited it yet. Um, I started with it a few months back and then set it aside. And I tend to do that. I tend to start and set it aside and not to get it overworked and then go back to it. So I started with uh, the background um, with a watercolor uh, wash in a uh, Gold. I use a lot of gold, so there's a light gold and, and yellow yeah, wash. I can see some of that. Up yes, there. Um, and um, then I used a, a blue um, acrylic, and then I set it aside, and then I brought it back out, and um, oh, I did use. Uh, a, a, Pencil and um, cray pods. Some of the black is, is cray pods uh, floating through it. So I do incorporate linear uh, uh, yeah, pieces in there, yes, you're pointing out, and lines to make it a little bit more interesting. And then I came and used enamel. So that's black enamel uh, making that uh, figure. And then I took some of the black enamel out into the other areas. And um, of course, it's called headdress. So it worked into the top part of it. So it's, it's ab abstract. And um, people see different things. Yes. Though, right? Because I do see the face yes. here. And, and I do enjoy doing abstract work because it gives the viewer a choice to look at it and decide what they like about it in different figures and right. they see different objects in it and which is interesting to me to hear also. Right. We're going to get to the third one, but I do want to uh, go to a quote that you had on your website that I thought was really cool. You said, I want the viewer to experience images of playfulness and happiness, allowing for a moment to forget their surroundings and negative forces that abound in our world today. Tell exactly. me kind of what that means. What do you mean by that, all of that? Well, just to look at the pieces and, and forget about what is going on and read it and look at it and appreciate the colors and the figures 
and f for the viewer to uh, uh, make their own interpretation of the piece. Right, and, and find joy in it too, which I see in all of your color that you used. Tell us about this and what inspired you to create well, this um, piece. This is just from studying art history and, and um, whatnot. So um, <laughs> this is Horace, and this actually won an award just a few weeks ago at the uh, uh, Whitewater uh, Alliance uh, Center for uh, Viewer's Choice. So I thought that was interesting. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. And, um, it was for their uh, Halloween Hollow Gala. So I thought this piece really f suited the, the Hollow Gala. And again, this is a uh, watercolor and acrylic and uh, pencil and uh, enamel. So I started out with a gold wash and um i love it it's it's so intriguing and there are so many little details yes, in your work yes 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 and i do even use a pencil uh it's it's for photography and i found with uh, uh spraying it with water it tends to bleed so it gives it a little bit more interest so i try to incorporate uh, interesting details um, that will draw your attention. Yeah, that's a cool trick yes. that you've learned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, speaking of tricks and processes, if there were some advice you could give to an aspiring artist who admires your work and would, would like to get to this point someday, what would you say to them? Be experimental. All my work is very experimental. And I learned that from studying with, you know, different schools and I found it interesting and at the time artists back in the 60s, 70s tended to not stay in one place so I was thought it was kind of fortunate that I was able to go to three different schools and I had a lot of experience and background and uh, that built my style and, and, and confidence, confidence and, yeah. and one school was good on presentation and one school when I was at Layton I had a watercolor art artist uh, professor and she was excellent and um, she showed a lot in, in she was from Wisconsin but she taught in Cincinnati art school and different places so she had a really good you know background and experience but she gave me a, lo a lot of uh, um, experience at watercolor. Sure. I love how you've taken all these different mediums and you've combined them to create a Woody Olson unique type of art. That's really cool. Now, um, tell us about when you started exhibiting and how long this has been going on as an artist. Well, of course, after I uh, graduated with my BFA, I went through school working part-time. So I worked in the medical field. And um, I had experience working with patients and this and that. So I moved to Chicago. So I lived in Chicago for order, over 40 years. And while I, I was in Chicago, I did hang in the gallery for maybe 15, 16 years. I was always out going to art openings I mentored artists. I knew a lot of the gallery owners and gave them names of artists that I liked for shows. And of course, showing, uh, hanging in the gallery, I acquired quite a bit of art. So the gallery happened to be a pop art, an outsider art uh, gallery. So I uh, collected quite a few pieces of art from them. And then I retired and moved out to Wisconsin, and I started painting again. 
And um, my first paintings, which will be in the sh show, tended to be a little bit more minimalist because when I was in school, I was doing a little bit more mi minimalist type of washes and um, using a lot of blue. So a lot of my early work now uh, will be in that show. And then I just kept on and, and it's uh, worked into this style. So it's been a long while as an artist and so glad that you're here sharing with our community. Now, was it hard to choose pieces for this exhibit or? Well, yes, I had to think about what I was uh, wanted to show and representational of my work. Um, and some of them are in shows right now. So I do have, I'm in a number of shows currently. And um, I thought, okay, what am I going to bring? So I decided these were, uh, you can see my brush strokes and everything going on there. And you can see my Jackson Pollock uh, going on in the gold one. And, um, and you can see a little bit of my drawing background and figure, figure, right. uh, figure drawing in here and, um, and incorporating my enamel. And um, mm -hmm. so I thought these were good representational. Right. And are you excited for the exhibit at Hedberg in December? Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It should be interesting for me to even see all my work myself. So, <laughs> See it all in front of you. Yes. Well, Woody, thank you so much for coming in today and giving our viewers a chance to really get to know the person behind your unique and spectacular art. Well, We love that. I enjoy the, the community. I enjoy Janesville, Beloit, and um, there's, you know, wonderful artists in the area and mm -hmm. um, sculptures by uh, uh, Schaefer, the, uh, the the sculptures that are out in front of the, yeah. uh, here, in front of the library, and you have some in, inside. And um, of course, he was connected with Beloit College. So, so growing up, I did get to Beloit College a lot because we were very close. Mm -hmm. So I did see a lot of uh, artwork at Bloy College. Yeah, yeah. So great. Well, thank you so much for coming in to visit. Well, you're very much welcome. We appreciate that. And we invite the public to come visit the library this month to check out Woody's display. And if you'd like to learn more about Woody Olson's beautiful artwork, you can find his information displayed on your screen. Thank you all for joining me today. Please check out this program on JATV Media Services, Charter Cable 994. You can also find it on JATV's YouTube channel. Remember, don't wait for another day. Go out and make some wild, whimsical, wonderful art. I'm your host, Teresa Wynn. I'll see you next time on Meet the Artist.